All right, guys, here's going to be a short video for what we didn't cover in class. Um, I'm super happy with how much we got through, but we're going to be starting at page 408 with diverging lenses. So basically another type of lens that's going to be used in optics is what's called a diverging lens. And like a converging lens, this lens uses the fact that light bends when it encounters glass, right? Okay, and similarly, it's made of curves that are arcs of a sphere. Um, but the difference between a diverging lens and a converging lens is that a diverging lens bends horizontal light rays away from each other, okay? And this can be seen in figure 12.10, okay? So make sure you see how the rays of light are coming in and then what happens to them afterward. And then if you look through example 12.6 again, we're not going to work through this one um, just as in class, but it walks you through how you're going to get um, the image is going to be virtual, upright, and reduced, okay? So analyzing these situations with diverging lenses are very similar from the converging lenses. Um, instead of the lens focusing horizontal light rays to the focal point, on the other side of the lens, it bends them as if they came from the focal point on the same side of the lens as the object is, okay? Um, so that's kind of the biggest thing. Let's work through on your own 12.9. All right, so on your own 12.9 says, you have a diverging lens that has a focal point, focal points that are 7.0 centimeters from its center. If an observer looks through the lens at an object 16.0 centimeters from the lens, how will the image appear? Is it real or virtual, upright or inverted, magnified, reduced, or essentially the same size as the object? Okay, so here we are, I drew it out. We have a diverging lens and our focal points are 7.0 centimeters. So this is also gonna be 7.0 centimeters. And then it says the observer looks through the lens 16, so I need to go another nine. So here's my arrow is right, kind of right there on that, all right? Um, and then I'm gonna work through the problem. Okay, so remember that for diverging lenses, horizontal rays pass through it as if they were coming from the focal point on the same side of the lens, okay? And then rays headed to the focal point on the other side of the lens come through traveling horizontally and then rays passing through the center are not deflected, okay? So when we have our ray going from the top of the object, this is gonna be a straight line. I know it's not perfect because I'm trying to film and do it at the same time. Then it's going to act as if it's going through the focal point. So I need to have it going off this way, okay? Then my next one, it's as if it was coming from the focal point this way. It'd be a lot easier if I had a ruler, but I don't. So I'm aiming and then it's gonna go off horizontal. That is not the best drawing. It needs to be a little more curved, but hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do there. And then last, Lastly, I'm going to hit this spot right here. And I'm going to keep going. It's not deflected. Okay, so you can see that the rays, the light rays in this case, do not intersect. So what's going to happen is they need to be extrapolated backwards, right? So if I were to do this one backwards... to do I'm coming backwards and then this one coming backwards I'm gonna hit about here and remember where they intersect is the top of the object okay so you can clearly see that it's going to be a virtual image right because we had to extrapolate backwards it's upright it's the same direction as the original and it's reduced the original is this big and the other one is the new one is this small. Okay. So it's going to be virtual upright and reduced. All right. So next we're jumping into the human eye. The human eye is so cool. 
and just the way that it handles light. Okay, remember what I said at the beginning of the module, without light, we wouldn't be able to see things, right? So figure 12.11 is the anatomy of the eye and it kind of walks you through. So basically the eye is covered by a thin transparent um, substance, which is your cornea, right? And it protects the eye and it also, as, also as light enters it, um, it bends it right? Its index of refraction is greater than one. And then you have the iris. It regulates how much light gets into the eye. Okay. And then you've got the pupil, right? And you guys know if you've ever been to the eye doctor, right? When you're in the presence of bright light, what happens to your pupil? It makes your pupil really, really tiny, right? And when there's little light, um, your pupil is really, really large, right? This happens when they dilate your eyes. So basically, once light enters uh, the pupil, uh, it's focused by a converging lens, okay? Um, and it talks about that right there um, in your book. And it's pretty cool how it talks about how your eye can actually change the shape of the lens in order to keep the image in the same place. And they do that, it can do that with the ciliary muscle, okay? So the eye can actually change the shape of the lens in order to keep the image in the same place um, via the cili ciliary muscle. So it squeezes or expands the lens and changes the focal point. And then your book talks about how when using cameras, you can change the position of your lens, but different than your eye, which can actually sh change the shape of the lens, which is pretty cool. I also like how your book talks about... Um, Darwin, even when he was publishing his Origin of Species, even he admitted that the way that the eye works is pretty crazy and couldn't just happen by ha happenstance. So um, then your book also talks on nearsightedness and farsightedness, myopia, hyperopia. Um, you can know a little bit about that. And then it even talks about bifocals and trifocals and how those work. So um, let me jump in to the review questions for you and then hopefully that will help you as you prepare for your test. Okay, so I've got the review questions right here. All right, so number one, suppose you wanna see your entire body in a flat mirror. Do you need a mirror that is as tall as you are? Hint, look at figure 12.1. We talked about this in class and you don't need a mirror as tall as you are. It just needs to be half your height. Number two, if you're doing a very precise optical experiment, need a curved mirror that will sharply focus all horizontal light rays to a single point, which kind of mirror should you use? And it should be a parabolic mirror. We talked about this in class two. They have no spherical aberrations um, and they're gonna be super sharp with the images. Number three, what's the difference between a virtual and a real image? So virtual images are formed when you have to extrapolate light rays and real images are formed when the light rays just intersect um, without extrapolation. Number four, notice how the pencil looks disjointed above and below the water level in the picture on the right. What causes this? And that's going to be refraction. And I did this in class with a straw. Number five, explain why you can see through a window, but why you can see through a window, but you can often see your reflection in the window as well. When light hits that transparent object like a window, part of the light goes through the object, but the rest is reflected. So you can see through the window, everything that's outside with the light that travels through it. And then on the light that's, re that's reflected, you see your reflection, okay, from inside. Number six, in my church, there's a special window between the foyer and the nursery that allows parents to look into the nursery to check on their little children. However, from inside the nursery, the window looks like a mirror and the children cannot see out of it. That way, the children will not see their parents when their parents are checking on them. Consider a light ray striking the window from inside the nursery. Will it be absorbed, reflected, refracted, or some combination of the three processes when it hits the window? Also, consider a light ray striking light ray striking the window from the outside of the nursery. Will it be absorbed, reflected, refracted, or some combination of those three processes when it hits the window? And you can see when it's coming from inside, it's going to be reflected and refracted. And when it's coming from outside, it's going to be absorbed and reflected. Okay. And you know this, um, you know that the light rays from inside the window are both reflected and refracted because 
people inside can see the reflections, right? But light also travels through the window because people outside can see the people inside, okay? And then light rays from outside the window are mostly absorbed but also reflected. Since the people inside can't see the people outside, the light rays traveling from the outside through the window must get absorbed. Um, but the people outside can see their own reflection to some extent, so light will always reflect off that surface. So that's why those... Oh, okay. Um, so that's why those are going to be absorbed and reflected for number six. Okay, moving on to number seven. The index of refraction of substance A is 75% that of substance B. And which substance will light travel with the greatest speed? So the larger the index of refraction, the slower the light travels. So that's going to be substance A. Number eight, given the statement in the question above, which substance most likely has the higher density? So again, light travels more slowly, the more dense the medium. So that's going to be B. Number nine, when a photographer is taking a picture and does not use autofocus, she mainly turns a cylinder around the lens. This focuses the image onto the film. What is the photographer? What is the photographer doing to the lens when she turns a cylinder? She's changing the position of the lens. Number 10, how does the human eye keep the image of the object it is viewing focused at the same place even when the object moves? That's the ciliary muscle of the eye um, changes the shape of the lens. So this changes its focal point, which changes where the image forms. All right, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, hopefully all those problems we worked in class if you're not quite sure, just practice a few more problems before you take your test. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys on Monday.